तो नमस्कार सत्यकाल आदाब वेलकम टू हैदराबाद हैदराबाद आए तो एक शेर से शुरुआत करेंगे अगर मैं ही मैं हूं तो क्या मैं हूं अगर मैं ही मैं हूं तो क्या मैं हूं अगर तुम ही तुम हो तो क्या तुम हो अगर मैं ही मैं हूं तो क्या मैं हूं अगर तुम ही तुम हो तो क्या तुम हो जब तुम और मैं जोड़ेंगे हाथ और चलेंगे साथ जब तुम और मैं जोड़ेंगे हाथ और चलेंगे साथ तो बनेंगे हम और हम में होगा दस का दम so just the translation what it means is that just me alone i am nothing just you alone are nothing but if we join our hands together we can create multiple profits or uh, great work the topic which i am going to talk about today is selfless leadership the army way that is based on my experiences in the army over two decades people have seen the leaders who have inspired me and whom i have tried to imitate the talk about selfless leadership may look a bit disconnected to you in your current status but let me tell you you are not just financial advisors you are also humans your fathers your children some of you may be grandparents your humans your citizens of a country and i'm sure some of you or in each one of you have experienced some form of selfless help at any point in your life did you yes those who have experienced selfless work coming towards you please raise your hands let's say starting with your mothers who selflessly brought you up yes? yes so we in our lives have experienced selfless leadership at some point and we need to give back the journey when you said we for victory we need that movement from i to v and that i to v is possible when we do selfless acts when we take up selfless leadership role when i say leader all of you are leaders so that's what i'm going to focus on today and i'm sure that some points definitely will you connect to and probably implement or imbibe with you So can you see this slide? Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Fantastic. So this is where I was in uh, 1996, posted in the Siachen Glacier, which is the world's highest battlefield, toughest battlefield, and we are facing two big threats. The first threat is the enemy threat, who is constantly bombing you, bombarding, spraying bullets onto you from the other side. And the second big threat, why it is the toughest battlefield, is because of the weather. The temperatures go up to minus twenty, minus thirty, minus forty, minus fifty. You would have heard that some Everest uh, mountaineers have died staying in a particular place for two, three days. We have to stay there for six months, and in those six months, I didn't sleep. For six months, uh, some always half asleep because you don't know when <coughs> something can happen, and in a moment you can just lose your life. There are blizzards, there are snowstorms. Everything happens all of a sudden. So that's me doing my climbing of the uh, uh, ice wall. It's absolutely plain vertical. Now, what was happening is we were in a post which is at nearly eighteen thousand feet. Every second day, we had to go down, get our rations. in kerosene oil every second day that is our, our life and why kerosene oil because we have no electricity there the only way we survive is by burning kerosene uh, stoves have you ever uh, used a kerosene stove how many of you have never seen never, never used you seen that but never used it yeah i also never used it earlier till that time i landed it runs 24 hours because that's our survival so once what happened was There was continuous snowstorm happening, and we couldn't go down. It was five days. We were running out of this fuel and rations. Six days, the snowstorm, snowstorm stopped, but we still couldn't go down because of threat of avalanches. Because when there is heavy snow, the next day there will be an avalanche. So on the seventh day, purpose, our team had to go down, and we sent down. I sent down. I was the post commander there. They sent down a team in the afternoon. At around five o'clock, I got a call. Sir, 
we are hit by an avalanche and there are all my teammates are missing. So I said, are you okay? He said, yes. <coughs> Fine. Then you search, be there, search, and I am sending down a, a search team for you. Immediately I called my team members together. I said, look, an avalanche has hit and we need to send down a team. I nominated one Holdar, okay, you are the team party commander and you go down and so I asked for volunteers. I needed five people. How many who would like to volunteer? So only two people. So it was getting dark. Now even the rescue party can get caught in an avalanche. That is the threat. Everyone is afraid. So a lot of people say soldiers don't feel fear. No, it's not true. Every human being feels fear. I also felt that fear. What to do now? At that point of time, you start remembering your family back there. So, when I life pass forward, I was like, I also felt the same thing. And when I saw that nobody was volunteering, only two people volunteering, I said, okay, all that you stay put. I'm going to take the rescue team. Now, who are volunteers? Ten hands went up immediately. Because that is the faith they have in me as a post commander. And I as a post commander have to take that risk. I can't just sit there and say, okay, you go. That doesn't happen. And that is what happened. So I took down a team, we went down there. The four people who were uh, missing, we found three people in normal state. One guy had uh, his boots off and had a lot of injuries. We had another team coming uh, from the base. We picked them up, so took them back. And by next morning, we reached back to our place. That is how I as a leader am trained in the army to go beyond myself and not think about my safety and my welfare, but to think about my task. At that point, between fear and duty, I have to choose duty. Because if I choose fear, I can still say that, okay, two people volunteered, okay, three of you, five of you will go. They had to obey my order. But then it would be reluctant. And next time they would say, oh man, post commander is sitting there and he's sending us with all the risk. But with that action, next time they know that they have full faith in me as a leader. But I have to perform that selfless act at that point, time, point of time. Even at the cost of my life, it could be. A moment and you are gone. It could happen that way. So this is one of the photographs of that particular while they were doing, of course. <laughs> so one question which is asked to me many times is, why is it that all the time, Army is called, if there are floods, army is called, if there is riots, army is called, if there is earthquake, army is called, any critical situation, army is called. Why not some other organization? Why is the army so different? Why does it happen that after 12th class, the, the two boys pass out, one goes into a normal degree, one goes into the army after four or five years of training, the person who walks through the National Defense Academy or Indian Military Academy, completely different, transformed person. There has to be a system, isn't it? And why can't we have that system in the entire country? Why can't every citizen be like a soldier? Do you think it's possible? Yes. Is it possible? Yes. We should aspire for it. Why not? Why not that every citizen is responsible? Why only the army? Why not we Why not we will put Is desh ka development ka zimbabwe kiski hai? Only the prime minister and chief ministers or the army? Everyone. Every citizen. Yeah? Right. So when I walked into the National Defense Academy, that was in 1983, this was the symbol which I saw. There's something written down below. What do you see there? What does it mean? Service is supreme. Supreme. Service is a prime duty. Or even you can say service is a religion. Isn't that amazing? Service. What is my religion? Service. Seva hai mera dharma hai. Kitni badi baat hai. Kitni badi baat hai. Ki na mera religion ye nahi hai. Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Kisai. Nothing. Seva. That's what we are taught all the time. 
every day your only religion is service seva that is why you find when a soldier comes across a situation even if the threat to his own life he sacrifices his life for for other kind of other people but my question is why only the soldier should do it can we use that experience to transform our citizens i believe we can next in the indian military academy we go a step further now this is the called the jet food motto this is uh, given to every passing out officer <clears throat> the safety honor and welfare of infantry comes first always and every time the honor welfare and safety of the men you command comes next your own ease comfort safety comes last and always and every time so i am not the first person in my life i am not the priority the priority is country to the troops that we command and three last is me so this is the crux of selflessness that you see that is imbibed in that act actually works it is there it's happening it is the same set of people we are not importing aliens into the indian army it is the same indian who is here but transformed due to a particular ethos values principles which i believe every citizen every person should carry now let's see what happens on the flip side now, what i am going to say is not criticism don't take it personally it is just an observation okay my perspective so what happens when typically something happens in the civil world you know building is on fire let's say and the people rushing all the time somebody is screaming from the building help 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 and you know a lot of people are all around they rush towards the building and then start taking some video selfie <laughs> video le rahe facebook live building burning how many people actually try to go and save very very few koi selfie lega selfie is the body building he whatsapp pe dalega whatsapp pe dalega so the point is he doesn't feel connected to the human being who is there in crisis he doesn't feel responsible ki ha koi aake karega meri jawabdari nahi hai so i'm just posting a picture of something which happened very recently do you remember this yeah so sure. sure. There was one guy, one guy out of that thousands was there who actually went up and he saved a few students. Do you remember that? Have you have you seen that video? His name is Ketan. One guy who actually went up and saved people at the risk of his own life. And here is the picture for you. He actually climbed there. We need more of Ketans. We need more people to feel responsible for what you know the the surroundings. Not just that; it's a fire department का काम है, no? In fact, they don't allow us. Yeah, that's that's the other part, of course. I mean, just saying, fire is just one example, but maybe. Even if somebody is working overnight, yeah, they don't allow us. That's somebody when they come. Yes, yes. After they come, after they after they come. Before that, before that, what you can do is maybe call up fire department. Ring like there's so many incident people they are just watching and recording instead of calling police. Only if not you cannot jump. At least you can call, give a call, right? But it is a sense of responsibility. कि मेरी जवाबदारी में मैं कुछ करूँ. You know that attitude is what I'm talking about. So one more example I would like to give. Has anyone seen this soldier? Okay. So there was this train in September 2010 which was going from Gorakhpur. And uh, it was stopped in the middle of the jungle, and whole lot of decoys climbed onto that and started looting the passengers, molesting women. There were a group of 20 to 30. Then there is one compartment. There is one soldier in it called Havaldar Vishnu Shrestha. He, when he saw these decoys doing all that, he said that I am not going to let this happen. He pulled out his kupri. All the Gurkha soldiers from Gurkha regiment. So Gurkha soldiers have got this kupri. Kupri is a big knife which is part of their. Uh, you know dress so he took that out started fighting with them alone he he put all those uh, decoys back he pushed them back 
He hit a few of them. They were injured. He also got injured. But by the time the police came, they were able to arrest six of them, and they recovered a lot of money and jewelry of which the this decoys had looted the, from the passengers. And because of this bravery, he one soldier fighting alone, he got a lot of awards from Nepalese government because he was going to Nepal. He was a Nepalese citizen, you know, and also the Indian government. He could have also just, you know, just jump so go, अपना बर्बाद निकाल के दे दो. क्या जाता? Why risk his life for others? But that is sense of duty in him that I am responsible not just for me but for the people around me. That that responsibility, that attitude is what really, really, really works. That just that's bad. needed. Yeah, sorry, what is it? Just bad. Just bad. Beautiful. Just bad. So that's his photograph. That's of course when he was injured, that he getting a number of awards which he got. His name is Hollar Vishnu Shrestha. He got a separate <laughs> Wikipedia page by his name. That's that's the power, and he's still he's still alive. The death to all will come, right? But before dying, what have we done? That's the biggest thing, right? Hollar Vishnu Shrestha. Yeah. Vishnu Shrestha. Okay. So now, as soldiers, when we are there on the border, fighting or doing various things which we are supposed to do, we always feel that you know even this needs to be passed on to the citizens, and we have as a soldier, as a person, I feel that even the, every citizen should imbibe certain things. What can a citizen do? What a citizen should do uh, with knowing that we have an army like this and which carries a set of values? So now let me share a few thoughts which I have with you. Whatever you find interesting, you can carry with you. The first thing which I would like to say is, don't worship the army. Here, everything is worship put on a pedestal and forgotten about it. What we need to do is follow their example. So example of you can take up dedication, commitment, discipline, dress, the attitude, just like somebody said. See what are these qualities which you find interesting there, which we can imbibe. The greatest service you can do to a soldier is by emulating him, not by worshiping him. The biggest shradhanjali you can give to a martyred soldier is not by a shower of flowers. But by a shower of selfless deeds, emulating him, imbibing what he has done, using that as an example. Next, again, this is very interesting. Take ownership. What do you understand by take ownership? Responsibility for. Okay, very interesting. So, how many of you heard of this slogan? Mera Bharat Mahan. Raise your hands. How many of us love to do something for our country? Raise your hands. Fantastic. Love this. Clap for yourself. Okay. Let's go down a bit. How many of you heard this of the slogan? Mera AP Mahan, Mera MP Mahan, Mera UP Mahan. <laughs> yeah, what happened? Nobody saw it. Not much. Bharat ke niche. उसके बाद मेरा सिटी महान मेरा भोपाल हैदराबाद फिर मेरा गांव मेरी गली तो मैं या तो सीधा मैं महान या सीधा भारत महान बीच का कुछ सो व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इज वी लव दिस बिल्डिंग या दे मेरा बिल्डिंग महान लेकिन इस बिल्डिंग में जो वॉल्स हैं पिलर्स हैं ब्रिक्स हैं उसकी जवाबदारी उसको बनाने का हम कोई कनेक्ट नहीं रख रहे वी आर नॉट कनेक्टिंग वी आर नॉट रियली टेकिंग ओनरशिप ऑफ एवरी पीस ऑफ दिस कंट्री वी वॉन्ट वी लव द कंट्रीज मैप एंड द बिगर थिंग्स द बिल्डिंग एज सच ब्लू प्रिंट ऑफ द बिल्डिंग बट नॉट द ब्रिक्स एंड द वॉल्स ऑफ द बिल्डिंग हुई टेकिंग केयर ऑफ दैट देन मेरे दे मेरे गाँव को कौन महान करेगा मेरे शहर को कौन महान करेगा मेरे प्रदेश को कौन महान करेगा कौन करेगा This is ownership. This is ownership. Unfortunately, a lot, most of the people are saying that ownership ends at the boundary wall of the house. Uske aage 
municipality, government, so and so. Huh? <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, that's another debate. I don't know if you can do that debate. So, I tell you, what I do? Every day in the morning, I make a belcha, you know, spade. Get up, this is raining, and make ditches, I fill those ditches, I pani kattava, I remove that. All around my my college, I go. A branch is grain, I cut that. Few days back, in Saini Puri, there was a huge thunderstorm I about a month back. All the uh, roads were blocked by trees and everyone was waiting. So I got down from my scooter, I went to the tree, I knew that I would not push that tree all along, but I just went and started doing this. A, two, three, five, six, five, and we were able to push the tree and the traffic opened up. Because I take ownership of every bit of the land around me, whether it's my colony, my street, everything, we need to do that. We need to take ownership and that's when things will change. We need to take ownership for every brick, every wall, every pillar, every town, every mohalla, every gully, every state. Only then when every state and every district prospers, then the country will prosper. Country We have to take care. Does it make sense? If it makes sense, please raise your hands. Thank you. Third, <laughs> stop Facebook activism. Now, uh, we have a colony group. Every day in the morning, I get save water, jalvi ji, vane, vagera, vagera. There are a lot of good messages. Then, I, when I walk around, I see, every day in the morning, I make a pipe, 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 I make a Jali Jeevan hai, har boon kiemti hai. So what is happening? We are getting stuck in this virtual activism. And it's not just harmless. We are thinking that we are doing something. It is creating a false impression. Delusion. Camouflaging. Ki hum kuch kar rahe, aisa lag rahe. If you want to save a tree, click on this. How will you clicking save a tree? If you want to save a tree, go and stand there and hug the tree. For 24 hours and your photo will come in the paper and somebody will notice. But if you keep clicking on the Facebook, nothing is going to happen. <laughs> the Chimko moment, yeah. Bahuguna. Yeah. Uh, that was his name, no? Yes. Bahuguna. So, when you have Facebook, you have to get a pair of 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 pair you want to donate blood, donate blood. Don't say we should donate blood. I have donated blood so many times in my life. But officers, soldiers, families. The last time I donated blood was for a boy from Holland here in Hyderabad who was suffering from blood cancer. And just the requirement came, wanted A negative. He just landed up at the hospital and he gave blood to that boy. He's from other part of the world. That gives great joy. Yes. What do you mean? Tenders clap for it. Super. Super. Okay. Four. Inspire someone. Yes. Uh, are you asking question? Or? Okay. Everything that you have, your mobile, your plot, your flag, your car, within one year of your death, will be transferred onto somebody's name. So if you say I have left behind a plot, it's no more in your name. I have left behind four houses, it's no more in your name. It will mutation like it's your name. The only thing which is going to remain after you are gone is the things you do, the words you speak, the good work you do for somebody else, the selfless things which you do for somebody else is going to remain here in the minds, in the hearts, in the books somewhere, with the hearts of some people. And I believe that each one of you has got wealth of knowledge with you. Find some source to give it back. Maybe language, maybe financial skill. Kush to aap kar sakte hai. Nei to sir flags aur usme hai. I mean that is also needed. I'm not saying that's not needed. But try to go beyond that. Think of people like Warren Buffett, Bill Gates. They've become the richest people in the world. Lekin uske baad kya kya honne? Uske baad ye extra baaki tha. Chari? Chari? Philanthropy. So you don't have to become, become the world's biggest 
richest man to give away something each person is yeah remember to generation yeah the work is, your work can be remembered by generation anna hazare may not have any anything except a kurta and pajama <laughs> but we all know him yeah so inspire someone everyone can do it after i left the army to concentrate in set up an institute in delhi transition uh, we reached out to schools colleges ngos with the aim to help the student become better citizens cooperative better leaders and in the span of 8 years me and mr we did program for about 30000 students and it was not just for soft skills to motivate them that do something beyond yourself even at that stage you don't have to retire to do something aaj har har insaan mein itni sharp taakat hai aur skills hai knowledge hai you can please reach out and help one more person okay and and is there a way you can remain even after you gone by doing this you can also donate your body yes i have donated my body not right now i said i'm gone you know the done that fantastic i have done that you have done that let's clap for them yeah You are not here, but your eyes, your heart, your lungs, or somebody else. You can donate, be a donor, and live forever, become immortal. Is it possible? Is it possible? Do you believe it's possible? So many things we can do to be selfless and help the people around us. Helping the country means helping the countrymen. Country क्या है? Country लोग हैं ना ये सिर्फ पहाड़ और नदी थोड़ी है. कंट्री के लोग अगर आप किसी कंट्री के किसी के हेल्प कर रहे हो इंडिविजुअल को तो आप कंट्री को हेल्प कर रहे हो ओके सो आर व्हिच व्हाट आई लाइक टू शेयर विद यू एंड इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन प्लीज फील फ्री टू या यस Okay, so I think there are certain ways like uh, NCC or there are certain uh, processes like that. I believe wherein the army is reaching out to the civilians, or there is also a talk, but only a talk of compulsory military service. Like some countries have like three years compulsory military service, which I personally believe is a good thing, wherein everybody is in a way takes ownership for the country and the surroundings. Maybe has a better set of uh, values and principles which can help the person itself. So when we say selfless. even right now when you are advising your clients you doing selfless service in a way because if he succeeds only then you succeed suppose he fails will you succeed yeah no so his success and your success is tied in a way you are doing selfless service that's i think when you are responsible for somebody's success that's really a great quality yes it's a part of basic education of ours but as we grow we just keep that aside and we just Literally forget things. As an individual, uh, we sweep us, we clean and everything, but we smoke, we we split. Agree, agree. Uh, we don't clean our roads and colony roads and all that, and we make we make dust. So these are the responsibilities of everybody. Agree. We, we need to be reminded. That is the coaching we are. We need to be reminded again and again of these things. I believe that all slogans must be translated into action. All emotions must be translated into action. All slogans must be translated into action. जब action है तो real है उससे पहले सिर्फ thoughts हैं. Every thought must come back into action. I think. Uh, Can you repeat for that slide where you were given the first? That is what you are. We I as a last person that course. We for victory. Yeah. अच्छा. There's nothing secret. Sir, sir. Everything is for you. So present the token of appreciation to Colonel Colonel Sir. Thank you. Let's have an applause.